Hello fish fools, Jeff here. So looking closely here, there's lots of shrimplets among the adults. It's all different size and age ranges mixed in the job moss. A nice buried female right here. See that belly full of eggs. So this is my 5.5 gallon red tank. Pretty much everything is red. Red substrate, red background, there's red lava rock here, and lots of little pieces of mopani wood all underneath here, and that even still has Cannons in the water. I just did another water change. But with all my tanks that have Mopani wood, none are this heavily concentrated in with Mopani wood. I mean, this being, they're all small pieces, but the ratio of Mopani wood to five and a half gallons compared to my other tanks that have Mopani wood, but like those that would have tannins at first. They're, eventually gets diluted with the water changes and this one's still you know you can't really notice it I guess with the red background and everything and it is doing the water change I wrung out the sponge filter on the the intake sponge of the hang em back filter so that kind of mucked up the water for the time being like to try this floating and stuff, but yeah, it is still a good amount of tannins in here. But yeah, I'm I'm happy that the cherry shrimp population is booming, and I'm going to still planning on moving some of these shrimp to other tanks, despite the population and tanks that don't have quite as many or if any cherry shrimp. Yeah, so this tank has. White clouds in it as well. There's four adults in here. I kind of see one through the, the mucky water here. Let's look at a, a top view. Let's have the lid off. So in here, there's the white clouds. And a while back, it was nearly two months ago when I was doing a water change then I pointed out that I found a fry in the bucket as I was changing the water I saw something moving in it I figured it was at first I thought it was gonna be a shrimp but then I noticed it was a fish fry so with that discovery I got excited thinking that it was a white cloud fry. I think they must have spawned. Because I haven't had any white cloud babies. And there is what was that fry. It has grown since. But it is, turns out, that was an imposter white cloud. That's actually an endler. Now that it's about two months later and grown. First, upon discovering it, I thought it was, you know, a little baby fry, tiny. I thought it was a, a white cloud that would have been born in here. And then I was looking for it maybe to a week later. I was not able to spot it, but then eventually I was seeing it again before it got any color. And I kind of, as I was looking at it, I kind of thought it looked a bit like a guppy, but I was, I guess, in denial and... Just seeing that I found in here, I was hoping it to be a, a white cloud. But in, when white clouds are tiny, I've never had fry, I've never had them breed, but there was a time a while back when I did, buy, from a local fish store, I did buy some really um, small ones, some youngsters, and they, they kind of look like, almost like neon tetras when they're, they're small. It 
kind of looks like they have a little bit of blue on them, and I was like waiting for this to kind of show that, and it didn't. It wasn't until I could kind of see on the tail fin like a sort of like a little red sword. That's what one of the traits of the Endlers that I have. They were actually their Guppy Endler hybrids from a lime green Endler and wild guppy. So that's what that is. So looking back, what happened before I was doing a water change on this tank, I did a water change on my three and a half gallon tank that has Guppy Endler hybrids. So and I was using the same bucket. So in that bucket, after doing that, I, I, this fry must have just been stuck in there and, you know, just somehow it just was, you know, as small as it was unnoticed and dumping out the water, it must have just been in like, some, stuck to the side of the bucket or in like a little drop of a, whatever was left that before getting dumped out. And then I started siphoning water out of this tank into it. And then I thought I just, scooped it up and yeah, was mistaken that it was a white cloud fry so oh well, that's kind of a shame I was hoping it was a white cloud fry but because um, all along I've been wanting to breed white clouds I've um, I've had them in here for a while and all research would suggest that white clouds are relatively easy to breed but one of the things that would help them would be live food like live baby brine shrimp and a while back so a couple of years now I bought some baby brine shrimp, shrimp eggs and from then until now I've been meaning to try to hatch some out but I still haven't had a chance to attempt that yet still plan to at some point but like everything I sometimes it takes me a while to Get to fit everything in with all the, the aquariums that I keep and keeping up with everything, but yeah. So, I kind of thought that, similar to like my, my Corridors, they've been, without live food, just feeding them Rapashi food, that, that's been able to trigger their, the Corridors spine, so I thought maybe that's what happened with the White Clouds too, but apparently not. With, with corridors, one of the common things is like li feeding them live black worms is one thing that you get them to spawn, but I've been able to spawn them without live food, just their patchy food, and yeah, just thinking maybe the white clouds might have had some propulsion, but no. So, yeah, and one thing I've kind of wanted to do in time is get some white clouds in my community tanks, but I, I wanted to try to breed them and and grow the population that way and spread them to some of the community tanks. So it's kind of, you know, all the fish that I keep and all, all my other community tanks, like my two 40 gallon tanks, my 84 gallon tank, my 29 gallon tank, all those, and none have white clouds in them among all, you know, a bunch of different species in those community tanks. So some at some point, I would like to get white clouds in those tanks, but yeah, so. We're going to try to breed them first in another tank, so I may still try to do it in here, but this really, just for visual purposes with the all the red, it's hard to see. I mean, <clears throat> with these new Caridina shrimp, the cherry shrimp here, just up against the green in the front of the tank with the light shining down on them, it just has a this submersible LED light, like this this five and a half gallon is a kit that came with a, a light in the hood. The hood is off right now, but inside the hood had a little LED light. Not very good. It wore out, but this submersible light does a better job. It's kind of cool how this job moss is growing like this, like the front half where the light is growing out here, and then there's like the open space in the back for a swimming. Yeah. So there's that's what's going on with this, and the other thing is. I have one more white cloud to add, so in my quarantine tank, the white cloud, I moved all the other fish that went to different tanks, like the um, platys to different tanks, neon tetras, autosynclus, the black mollies, the 
Garamis. All that will move to their various community tanks that I showed in previous videos, but the last one that was still in there when I was buying fish from different pet spots and spectros, one of them had one lone white cloud left, so I just got it so I could put it in here. And so that's what I'm going to do. And yeah, so I'm going to gather that up and add it to this tank. Stand by. Alright, so here it is. Plop. So I just had it in the bucket and just scooped it out with my hand, and there it is. Yep, yeah, so that's the last white what last fish from quarantine to move. There's still the what's in that tank. The quarantine tank is still the uh, red eye tetra and semi algae and some platy fry. But yeah, so with the that guppy on there in here. Maybe I should add some more guppy owners in here, and maybe one thing I'm thinking of is doing that and then possibly moving the white clouds to another tank and really get that when I do get that chance to breed or some hatch some baby brine shrimp to feed to them and try to get them breeding. So that is a possibility that I could do. Let's check out the quarantine tank. All right, so here's my 10 gallon quarantine tank. This is the red-eye tetra, the, the permanent resident of this tank. Maybe at some point I'll get some more and add them as a group to my community tank, one of my community tanks, but for now, it's just the permanent resident here. And the Siamese algae eater, I don't intend it to be a permanent resident of this tank, but it's just going to stay in here for now until I decide on where to put it, and that's really going to be dic dictated by whichever of my tanks that is... Um, in need of algae eating. So, for, then, for the time being, I'll see here. There are several platy fry in here from the last group, from the quarantine fish that were in here. They were born in here, so within this job of moss, there are some. So, I'll let them grow, and then, like as it is, with the job of moss in here and only the red eye tetra and the Simon's algae eater, they have better chance of. Surviving there. The last one I saw was getting a little bit bigger, so they're, they're getting close to the point where they can just be out in the open and not worry about getting eaten. But I won't let them grow in here before I try to move them to other tanks. But yeah, so now that the white cloud has moved, I may be adding more fish to this tank. It's a very good chance um, I could come home tomorrow with some new fish. I am going to be on the other side of the valley tomorrow and there's one of the platy fry so as I'm on the other side of the valley there where I live um, there's several Petco's in the Las Vegas Valley and there's a few of them that have a pretty good selection of fish some some are pretty lousy selection wise and some are pretty good and I know that the one that I'm going to or the one that I'm going to be near Tomorrow, oftentimes I've been there and I have had a good selection. Like I, that's the one where I bought Odessa, Odessa barbs from. For the longest time, I was looking for Odessa barbs, couldn't get them or find them anywhere, and then happened to stop by a, this Petco and they had Odessa barbs. So the, those ones I have in my my 84 gallon tank, the first group that I had before I got a couple more that I found in my local fish store, and yeah, and I. My Corbensis, my two female Corbensis I got from that store too. So, um, but yeah, so I'm gonna stop by there tomorrow if they have anything that I might like. Uh, the platy fry right there. Yeah, so now that all the other fish have moved out, this will be ready to move in as some new fish for a quarantine session. So that could that could happen as soon as tomorrow. If not tomorrow. It will soon because there are other fish that I have in mind to add to some community tanks. So yeah, so stay tuned for that. All right, and that's it for now. And remember, I'm Jeff, and I enjoy fishies. Thanks for watching.